morning i hope that you all are well and doing your studies students today we are here with the same chapter chapter number 12 second part in our previous part we have studied about that what is friction and what are the different types of friction now today we are here with the second part of this chapter in which we are going to study about that what are the advantage and disadvantage of friction and what are the ways of increasing or reducing the friction and about the fluid friction so these topics that we are going to cover today one by one so let's start with the first topic that is about that what are the ways that are used to reduce the friction so let's start with the first topic that is reducing the force of friction so what are the different ways that are used to reduce the friction about this we are going to study today why reducing the friction is important so in some cases the friction is harmful to us in such cases we wish to reduce the friction so as to make it less harmful to us for example friction between the moving parts of machines causes lot of wear and tear to the machine parts and it also leads to the production of undesirable heat and loss of energy so we should make efforts to reduce the friction or minimize the friction so as to prevent much damage so it is very important in order to prevent the lot of damage that is caused by the friction it is must to reduce the friction so the friction can be reduced by the following methods so there are def- different methods that is used to reduce the friction so we are going to study about that what are the different methods that are used to reduce the or to minimize the friction as we know that that it is imp- possible to completely get rid of friction but it can be reduced the friction between the shaft the long pole in a picture there is one picture that is given to you that is known as shaft the long pole in the picture and an outer part of the machine produces lots of heat the friction can be reduced by placing the in second diagram it can be reduced by placing the ball bearings between the shaft and the outer part so in the second diagram you have seen that there is the uh, there is a round balls that is placed between the shaft and the outer part that reduces the amount of friction so this is one of the way of reducing the friction there are some other ways also that are used to reduce the friction so the friction can be reduced by using the lubricants like powders oils and grease it can be reduced by using the rollers or wheels it can be reduced by using the ball bearings and if we sprinkle the powder on a carom board to reduce the friction oil and grease are applied between the moving parts of machine to reduce the friction wheels are used in machine to reduce the friction ball bearings are used in ceiling fans bicycles and vehicles to reduce the friction so about this we are going to know about that what are the ways by which we are able to reduce the friction in detail so the friction can be reduced by applying the lubricants like oil grease to the rubbing surface so first of all we know that what are lubricants the substances which reduce the friction are called lubricants oil grease graphite fine powder these all are the examples of lubricants the applying of lubricant such as oil and grease to a machine is known as lubrication when we apply these oils and grease to the machine this is known as lubrication a lubricant like oil reduces the friction by helping the surface slide over each other smoothly thus the friction can be reduced by the lubrication so we can say that it can be reduced by the friction because Uh, it can be uh, reduced by the lubrication because these reduces the friction by hel- helping the surface to slide over each other smoothly machines are lubricated with oil and grease to reduce the friction 
A well lubricated machine runs more smoothly and lasts longer. A bicycle magnet and a motor magnet uses the grease between the moving parts of these machine to reduce the friction and increase the efficiency. Sometimes the hinges of the door make a rattling noise when we open or close the door. That is mainly due to the increased friction caused by rusting. When we drops of oils are poured on the hinges of a door, the friction is reduced and the door moves smoothly without making any noise. If we sprinkle the fine powder as a dry lubricant on a carom board to reduce the friction, so these are the several ways by which the frictions can be reduced, but it can never be entirely eliminated. But the friction cannot be entirely eliminated. It can be reduced, but it cannot be entirely eliminated. So this is one of the way of reducing the friction. Now, friction can be reduced by using the wheels to move the objects. As we know that it is uh, quite difficult to move a heavy suitcase by dragging it on the ground because the sliding friction between the heavy suitcase and the ground is very large. Now if, if this heavy suitcase is fitted with a small wheels called rollers, it can be pulled very easily. This is because when we attach the wheels, the sliding friction is converted into the rolling friction. So here the sliding friction is converted into the rolling friction and rolling friction between the wheels of the suitcase and the ground is much less. Thus the friction can be reduced by, it can be reduced by attaching the wheels or the rollers to a heavy suitcase or, or any other heavy object which is to be moved due to very small rolling friction even a child can pull a heavy suitcase fitted with a small wheels or rollers now this is one of the way of reducing the friction the next one is that we can use the ball bearings so first of all we know that what is ball bearings ball bearings means it is a device which consists of a ring of small metal balls so it is a device that is consists of a ring of a small metal balls and the small metal balls of the ball bearings can roll freely. Ball bearings are designed, these are mainly designed to make, to make the moving parts of the machine to roll over each other rather than slide. So it, what is the purpose of making the ball bearings? The ball bearings are mainly designed to, to make the moving parts of the machine to roll over each other rather than slide. The ball bearings is introduced between the two surfaces which have to rotate over each other. For example, the axle is fitted on the inner side of the ball bearings and the wheel is fitted to the outer side of the ball bearings. The ball bearings reduces the friction by making the two surfaces, axle and wheel, to roll over each other. This happens due to the rolling action of the small metal balls that is present inside the ball bearing. So the ball bearing works like this way and it is very helpful to reduce the friction. So it is a device which is consists of a ring of small balls and it is mainly designed to make the moving parts of the machine to roll over each other, other rather than slide. Now this is one of the way of reducing the friction. So these are the certain ways that are used to reduce the friction. For example, we can sprinkle the powder on a carom board. By sprinkling the uh, powder on carom board, we are making the, the surface of the carom board smooth. So this is one of the way of reducing the friction. Oil and grease that is applied between the moving parts of the machine that is mainly used to reduce the friction. Wheels are used in vehicles to reduce the friction that I have already told you. I have given you one example also and about the ball bearings that I have told you that how the ball bearings are helpful to reduce the friction. So this is uh, about the certain ways that are used to reduce the friction. Here there is a one diagram that is given to you. This is the diagram of the second diagram is of the ball bearings. Now useful friction means we are going to study about the advantage of friction we are knowing well that the, there are some advantage as well as there are some disadvantage of the friction so here we are going to study about that what are the advantages of the friction so the friction is useful 
for many of our daily activities the daily activities that we are doing it is very useful for our daily activities it is possible to hold a tumbler due to the friction between the hand and the tumbler if you want to hold something then if if there is no friction between the hand and that object then you are not able to hold that things so it is very important so the friction is very important to hold any object friction between the feet and the ground if there is no friction between the feet and the ground in that case that you are not able to walk on the ground so it is very important that there should be the friction between the feet and the ground it is possible to write with a pen how you are possible to write with pen or pencil this is mainly due to the friction if there is no friction between the tip of the pen and the and the uh, and the paper on which you are writing then you are not able to write it is possible to write on blackboard that is mainly due to the friction between the chalk and the blackboard friction is also important to anyone driving a car if anyone is driving driving a car in that case also the friction is very important because if there is no friction between the tires of the car and the road then in that case in that case you are not able to drive the car the groove tire treads that allows the space for the water to be channeled away from the road tire contact point and allowing more friction in the wet conditions the shoes are designed to increase the friction between their soles and the ground so these are the certain ways these are the certain uh, things uh, that we are uh, doing in our daily life and that is possible due to the friction so we can say that the friction is very useful to us now there are some disadvantages of the friction also so we are going to study about that what are the disadvantages of the friction now how the friction affects the motion means that what are the disadvantages of the friction here the first point is given to you if you roll a ball along the floor or the ground it will slow down and stop even though no apparent force is being applied to it the ball slows down and stops because of friction this thing that you have done if you roll a ball on a ground after covering certain distance it slows down and ultimately it gets a stop even you are not applying any force on it to make them stop this is mainly due to the friction so it affects the motion of the moving object friction slows down the moving object friction occurs when the two objects rub against each other when you rub your palms with each other uh after some time you will observe that it becomes uh, it becomes heated that is mainly due to the rubbing while rubbing the heat is generated due to the friction so a car that turns uh, that runs on a very rough uh, or a, a rough surface on a road slows down due to the friction however on a smooth surface it travels fast because on the rough surface there are more irregularities there is more interlocking so between the two surfaces so that's why it gets slow down and on the smooth surface the irregularities are less interlockings are less so that's why it smooth smooth smoothly on the smooth road a smooth surface have very fine bump bump sand uh, hollows and there is a less friction on a smooth surface a running object can glide or moving continuously with very little force so how the friction affects the motion so these are the certain points that shows you that by which the friction affects the motion of the moving objects now we are going to study about the fluid friction so first of all we know that what is fluid and then after we are going to know that what are fluid friction so firstly we know that what is fluid fluid those substances which are able to move or flow easily is commonly known as fluids so the substances which are able to flow easily which are able to flow easily are commonly known as fluids fluids do not have fixed shape liquids and gases are the examples of the fluid because they can flow easily the most common liquid around us is what Li is is what that is water so water is what water is a fluid the most common gas 
the mixture of gas around us is what air so air is also a fluid water and air are the most common example of the fluid now we are going to study about that what is fluid friction the friction whenever an object that moves through a fluid is known as means when an object is moves through these fluids like water and air there is a friction that occurs during that case and that friction is commonly known as fluid friction as we know that the air is very light thin yet it exerts a frictional force on the objects that is moving through it and which opposes their motion when object moves through the air it pushes the air out of the way and the air pushes back on the object thus the push of the air on moving objects creates the friction and which tends to slow down the moving object air exerts the frictional force on cars buses aeroplanes rockets and birds etc moving through it similarly the water also exerts the force of friction on objects when which move through them and opposes their motion when an object that moves through the water it pushes the water out of the way and the water pushes back on the object this push of water on the moving objects creates the friction which tends to slow down the moving object thus the water exerts the frictional force on the objects like boats speed boats ships submarines and fish which move through it thus the frictional force that is exerted by the fluid or air or water is commonly known as drag fluid friction is commonly known as drag drag is a kind of frictional force that is exerted by the fluid like air and water which opposes the motion of an object moving through that fluid drag force acts in a direction opposite to the direction of the moving object and it always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the object so we can say that the drag slows down the the object moving through the fluids and makes speeding speeding up harder harder typical examples of the drag are air resistance force that is experienced by a car or an aeroplane when they move at the high speeds and the water resistance force that is experienced by the speed boat moving rapidly in the sea so the magnitude of the frictional force or drag that is exerted by the fluid on an object moving through it is depends on four factors the first factor is the speed of the object the second factor is the shape of the object the third factor is the size of the object and the fourth factor is the nature of the object nature of the fluid nature of the fluid or the viscosity of the fluid now we are going to study about these factors one by one the first one the higher the speed of the object moving through a fluid greater will be the frictional force when the higher is the speed of the object that is moving through the fluid greater will be the frictional force second one is the object having the streamlined shaped face much less frictional force or drag when moving through the fluid then the objects which do not have the streamlined shape for example when a car has a streamlined shape like a wedge due to which it faces much less frictional force of air while running at high speed on the other hand a bus does not have the streamlined shape it encounters a much greater frictional force or drag from the air while running at the same speed the third factor is the large size of an object that is moving through a fluid greater will be the frictional force or drag acting on it for example the big aeroplane that is flying at a particular speed with is with face more frictional force of air or drag than a small aeroplane that is flying at the same speed and the fourth one is higher the viscosity or the thickness of the fluid viscosity means thickness thickness of the fluid greater will be the frictional force or drag acting on an object moving through it the water which is much more viscous or thick than air there will be the much more frictional force or drag on object when it moves through the water than water and then when it moves through the air so this is about the fluid friction that i have told you and i have told you the magnitude of the frictional force or drag that is exerted by the fluid on an object 
it depends on four factor first is the speed of the object second is the greater is the speed then greater will be the fluid friction shape of the object large large shape of the object means large will be the uh, fluid friction size of the object if the size of the object shape of the object in case of the shape of the object if they have the streamline shaped in that case uh, they are uh, in that case there will be the less uh, there will be the less uh, drag or the fluid friction uh, on it and about the size of the object we can say that if the larger is the size of the object then larger will be the uh, frictional force that is exerted by the fluid on that object and about the nature of the fluid we can say that if the fluid is thick then in that case there will be the more fluid friction so these are the four factors on which this frictional force that is exerted by the fluid on an object depends speed of the object shape of the object size of the object and the nature of the fluid now there are some disadvantages of the fluid friction there are main disadvantages of the fluid friction the the first one is that fluid friction reduces the speed of the objects that is moving through the fluid by opposing their motion the fluid friction reduces the speed of the object that is moving through that fluid and it makes the sp speeding up higher when the objects that is moving through the fluids or air they lose some of their energy in overcoming the fluid friction when an object that is moving through the air and water some of its energy is lost in overcoming the fluid friction and this decreases their efficiency so these are the main disadvantages of the fluid friction for example when a car is running on a road some of the energy or the petrol of the car is used up or lost in overcoming the friction of the air which opposes motion similarly when a speed boat that rushes through the water some of its energy or diesel is used up or lost in overcoming the friction of water so in order to improve the speed and to reduce the loss of energy or fuels the efforts are made to reduce or to minimize the fluid friction or the drag now we are going to study about that what are the different ways of reducing the fluid friction so firstly we know that what is streamlined shape it the fluid friction can be minimized by providing the streamlined shape to the object so firstly we know that what is streamlined shape a body shape which offers very less resistance to the flow of air or water around it is commonly known as streamlined shaped for example the fish have the streamlined shape the aeroplane have the streamlined shape the bird have the streamlined shape streamlined shape is a type of shape which is narrow at the front and broader at the back so this kind of shape is commonly known as streamlined shape so the methods of reducing the fluid friction the fluid friction or the drag can be reduced or minimized by giving the spacious shape and that shape is known as the streamlined shape to the objects which moves through the fluids like air or water when an object having the streamlined shape that moves very fast then the fluid fluid like air or water can can flow or pass the moving object smoothly reducing the fluid friction or drag for example the cars are built with a streamlined body to reduce the air resistance or drag that is caused by the air a car with a streamlined shape moves through the air easily without facing much air resistance and consumes the less petrol than the another car of the same size running at the same speed that has a shape which gives it more air resistance or drag more streamlined shape of the car less petrol will consume so we can say that the streamlined shape helps to reduce the fluid friction similarly an aeroplane has a streamlined shape to reduce the air friction or air resistance or drag or the fluid friction that it, it that it encounters when flying at high speed through the sky the shape of the aeroplane is similar to that of bird in flight both the aeroplane and the bird have the streamlined body in the middle in the middle and the two thin wings one on each side of the body and a tail the streamlined shape of an aeroplane has been built by the scientists and the engineers whereas the streamlined shape of the bird has involved in 
nature it is natural in fact the scientists and engineers got an idea for making the streamlined shapes of various moving objects from the living things in nature such as birds and fish the rockets are also built with streamlined shapes so that they encounter the minimum air resistance or drag or the fluid friction due to the air when they fly off an extremely high speed so these are the certain ways that are used to reduce the friction so we have studied that what is fluid friction so firstly we will know that what is fluids and about that what is fluid friction that fluid friction is commonly known as drag and what are the disadvantages of the fluid friction what are the factors on which this fluid friction depends and what are the method of reducing the fluid friction so this is the last topic of this chapter that i have covered today so students there are uh, some exercises that is given in your book so firstly you revise all the topics that i have uh, uh, that i have teach you today revise it properly and uh, try to solve the exercises yourself and try to learn it also so students thank you do your studies well